We're talking about drone rules today. You got a brand new drone for Christmas and you go to an epic spot to fly and then all of a sudden the drone doesn't want to take off because you're not to fly there and you know, drone rules are lame. But I would say that drone rules have a purpose. Yeah, they do. When we're flying one of these up in the air and we have other people sharing the airspace, we want to make sure that we're on the same page. Especially while we're in it. I know, right? There's been a handful of incidences where aircrafts and drones have collided. Yep, about 10 of them that have been officially uh, identified. But none of them have been too bad, right? No, there hasn't been any fatal uh, accidents because of it. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't be extra careful, of course. Flying a drone from a moving vehicle, I could fly the drone out of the van and follow us. It's okay as long as it's sparsely populated, right? From a moving vehicle. You cannot do it from an aircraft. So helicopters, Darn. that's what some people might want to do. We can't do that from a helicopter. Hmm. Nah, okay. Yep. So that's a no-go. And all drones have to be registered, right? Everything has to have that registration sticker on that. Correct. Except for those that are under 250 grams that are flown for recreational purposes. You could just print it out yourself on a sticker, but you guys have like a service. We do. Pilotinstitute.com slash free and we'll send you four stickers of different colors that you can put on your drone with your information on it and then uh, you'll be legal. And this is a free service you guys It's a do, free huh? service. That's, That's what we do. That's cool. Yep. Shipping and everything? Shipping and everything. I feel like drone rules can be really complicated. Yes. Unfortunately. It changes depending on where you are. So here in the United States, we follow the rules of the Federal Aviation Administration also known as the FAA. So this video will be focused on rules here in the States. Drone manufacturers like DJI have to follow these FAA regulations just like we do. Now I'd say most of the laws make sense and promote safety, but I do think some rules still need to be modified like remote ID. Now drones are still relatively new and quickly changing the landscape of things. So rules are constantly being updated. Every few years we see changes. As of filming right now, it is August of 2023. So it's important to know that we're gonna kind of go over the basic things you need to know at least right now but in about two and a half days everything will completely be worthless information probably <laughs> and i will be flying the mavic 3 pro cine thank you to dj for sponsoring this episode and uh this is one of my favorites right now the pro is definitely top of the list right now yeah because it's got that three cameras and four thirds sensor down below and pro res capability to that one terabyte internal but more on this a little bit later but let's just say all right i just picked up my first drone from best buy so you can't just go into the parking lot and take off right there no. you'd want to get a trust certificate certificate yep. but you guys offer that for free on your website we do there you'll do training 30 minutes we've done hundreds of thousands of them it'll teach you all the rules you get a certificate and then you're good to go rule number one know where you're allowed to fly and where not to fly and dji even comes with a little app that tells you where you can and may not be able to fly but it seems like a loft is definitely the recommendation for yes. most and it's free right and it's free let's go to where we're at right now i don't see anything even though there is an airport here there's an but airport. there are no limitations on this airport because yep. it's a smaller one yep helicopter flying right now right oh. over here let me get the drone up and get a shot of the helicopter <laughs> real quick huh? get closer did someone get just get in trouble for that yes yeah. somebody just got in trouble for flying too close and towards the helicopter and they actually played it guilty definitely don't do that don't go mess with people flying in helicopters now if we were to zoom out this is prescott right here that has an airspace around it and if we look closer there's actually a grid i remember people would always say don't fly within five miles of an airport that's no longer the case we have this beautiful program in place called lance you can get approval to fly near airports the closer you get the lower you can fly so obviously at the landing strip you do not want to fly there. fly there around there it's all zero but let's say you're right here yep then you could get up to 100 feet you got it so here if you click lance it tells you you can go all the way to 100 so you would stretch your markers here where you want to fly exactly it gets Submit it, boom, request approved, you're ready to fly. Can we just completely forget that five mile yes. rule? It no longer is relevant to anybody, whether you're recreational or professional. No, it doesn't apply. Five miles is no longer in the language. Also, another commonly known thing is national parks. Yes. That is a huge bummer that we can't fly at national parks. Yes, some state parks are also prohibited with drones. So make sure that you check the rules locally for that. Another concern is like emergency response. Yep. So anytime that you see a police helicopter or uh, an ambulance or a crash along the highway, chances are if there's a helicopter that needs to get there, they will not land if they spot a drone. So don't be that person that prevents somebody from getting saved and getting to the hospital. And the biggest thing also is wildfires. So if, please don't go and fly your drone to go see what's going on. They will stop operation and sending aircraft to extinguish the fire. It happens every year, unfortunately. And our favorite thing in the office is don't be that guy. As a drone pilot, it's kind of your responsibility to make sure that you are always out of the way of any sort of aircraft. Yes. Because it could be very hazardous. Somebody flew a Matrice 300 into a Cessna 172 on final. It was a police drone actually in Canada. 
and uh, they didn't know they were by an airport and the aircraft came in and hit it. So you can't imagine how expensive that was. Max altitude reached. Where are you, 400 feet? 393. Oh, so. that's good. Uh -huh. That's yeah. close enough. That go. gives you a buffer. We can't go more than 400 feet above ground level. So that's 400 feet AGL. So right now on my controller, I could see I'm 9.2 feet above ground level from the takeoff point. But if I move out a little bit this way, you're still 9.2 feet above the takeoff point, but you're much higher above the ground. There's no real technology to tell us our altitude above the ground at all times. So it's a judgment call, right? 400 feet, plus or minus a little bit, but you wanna make sure that you stay within that. Don't go to 1,000 feet, don't go to 2,000 feet. So right now I'm at 400 feet here, yep. but can I go higher here if you I wanna can. get over this? You can, because you're over an object because it slopes up. Right. So technically you're less than 400 feet above the ground. Now you would have to go in your settings and change it because it's yelling at you to not go over 400 feet. And, and I could see... set the max altitude. Yeah. How far can I fly? You can fly within visual line of sight. So that visual line of sight is gonna depend on the person. So see, we can still see your drone from here, that's visual line of sight. If you see a tiny little dot on the horizon, probably not visual line of sight because you can't tell altitude, attitude, and, and direction of flight. So you can keep pushing it a little bit further here. We're still pretty comfortable. I can still see it clearly, and I can still have also a visual on what's going on around the airspace around us. So that's an advantage of one of the bigger drones is because it's easier to see yep. further. You always have to be able to see the drone, line of sight. Not following these rules can get you in a little bit of trouble. If you hit an aircraft, if you hit people, if you get caught flying near the Super Bowl, all these things are gonna be extremely expensive. So yeah, there's special occasions like that where you might see a temporary flight restriction or TFR where a area becomes a no-fly zone for a certain amount of time. Now let's say I see a bunch of hikers. Can I fly over people? No, we cannot fly over people. OOP? OOP, operations over people. So over people or people in moving vehicles. Unless we have a categorized drone, but this drone is not a categorized drone. So operating over people is something that there are starting to become rules where it's like, okay, there may be exceptions, but as of right now, it's incredibly hard to get that exception. Yeah, the FA, that's one of the rule changes that we talked about in 2019. The FA came up with these new rules and said, well, you can fly over people if you have and follow this process. The problem now, it's a very cumbersome process and it's very difficult, but technically there is a process in place. What if I wanted to get a shot where I fly directly over us? Over us, so technically, you and I are kind of part of the operation because I was your visual observer. So it would be okay because we're part of the operation. Let's say there's a road like this and I wanted to cross it. As long as I check to make sure that there's no people or cars on that road, I can cross it. That's right. It's like the chicken crossing the road. You get to look both <laughs> ways. A few years back, I feel like you weren't allowed to fly at night unless you had a special waiver. Yes. So for part 107, you could only fly if you had a waiver. Recreational pilots were not even allowed to fly at night at all. So that has changed ever since 2019. The FAA realized that it was isn't that much of a risk and they're letting us do it. You just have to follow the certain rules for being able to make sure you have a certain light on there yep. that strobes. I have a loom cube that flashes that I could just Velcro on. You said there was a good brand that you suggest. Yep, Firehouse has a bunch of different lights that qualify. We have the Arc 5. That's the one that we recommend all the time. Why do we need bark bags? Well, some people have been in, in commercial flights, but they've never been in small aircraft, which is a little bit different. So it bumps up a little bit more. I think we'll be fine though. I don't think it's, yeah. 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 Do you notice how much was going on when we were taking off? Part of the reason why we want to make sure that when you fly the drone, you're not flying close to these airports. Pilots have other things to do to worry about when they're taking off. There's a lot going on. So we want to stay clear of the airspace when we fly our drones. So if there's drones, will that show up on here or no? No drones. No drones. So we always keep our eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had a close call too. Thank you so much to DJI for sponsoring this episode. This is my drone of choice for this trip, the Mavic 3 Pro Cine. Inside of here is a high speed one terabyte SSD so that it can write the ProRes in here. So here we are on the wide angle 1X lens. It's a 24 mil equivalent on that Hasselblad 4 thirds sensor. And now let's hop into the 3X lens, which is now a 70 mil equivalent. And finally, here is the 7X lens, which is a 166 mil equivalent equivalent so very tight on that half inch sensor now of course zoom lenses are useful because you don't have to be as close to the subject but I'm really interested in that zoom lens for the parallax so here's a similar shot but this time on the 3x lens notice how much more parallax there is where the background just looks like it's moving so much more and now if we're on the 7x look at this and the compression you know all those mountains back there just look so much Whoa. closer and more grand and epic say hello to the potato jet league of justice starting carry the smart one 
And Gene and Sam, the other one. All the Mavic 3s have obstacle avoidance in all directions. And if you're coming from an older version of the Mavic, maybe the Mavic 2 Pro, which was great for its time, you will notice a huge increase in performance when it comes to speed horizontally as well as vertically. And we also get much better range and image transmission. It's gonna fly more stable and fly for much longer, up to 43 minutes of battery life. Links down there in the description if you're interested in picking up something like this Mavic 3 Pro Cine or the Air 3 or maybe the Mini 3 Pro, which is under 250 grams, back to Pilot Institute. How many sets do you have in this room? So seven sets total, really. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six in the corner over here, and that's set seven right here. And behind set seven, we have the simulator. This is actually like an awesome playground for those little micro oh, yeah. in here, huh? Do well, you see we have gates? Oh, oh we have gates right in here. here. Oh, man. And this thing, this thing is so much fun to try to fly down. So not only are you all the face of the videos, but you're also here building out these sets and you started in a shed. Yep. And that's what I spent several years doing until we had enough employees that we moved into this big place. And at what point should someone consider getting a Part 107? If you want to do anything else other than recreational flying, then the Part 107 is going to be required. And YouTube as well. If you're posting videos of your kids, you know, to share with your family, that's recreational. So you do not need to have a Part 107. How about what I do? Because your channel is monetized and you're doing product reviews. So in this case, you would need Part 107. So about that um <laughs> carrie has a part 107 she can be a pic for you she can be the pilot in command and oversee your operation as you fly around so as long as she's certified and she will oversee what you do and she's able to take the flight control in case something happens then you're actually covered <laughs> should i get my part 107 now you sh definitely should get your part <laughs> 107 all right i passed all right i just left the testing center officially got my part 107 i know i've been putting it off for way too long but i finally got it so yeah you know i'm doing it legit now i honestly i feel like i should have just done this way sooner but i've just kind of been putting it off and i will say the test itself was uh it was pretty exhausting to study for because i kind of crammed it all in i should have just you know spread the studying out over time but you know i just tend to uh wait till the very last minute all the time and i will admit it was not an easy test to take i mean it can get really complicated because you're learning a lot more than just about drones but also about METAR weather reports and how to read these charts and all the stuff that you did not think you needed to know about. So this is a VR system. So he's looking at a Cessna right now and he can walk around and look at every part of the aircraft. I think I just got sliced <laughs> up by the propellers. It's interesting how much you actually have to learn about the actual airplanes mm -hmm. for the Part 107. The FAA, when they give you your Part 107 certificate, they give you a certificate to fly anything. You can fly a fixed wing drone or yeah. you can fly a multi-rotor. Yeah. So they don't differentiate between the two. If anyone wants to get their Part 107, good thing is you guys have a website for this. Right. Part 107 license training and all that. What is the total length of the course? It's 15 hours for the, for the course. It takes a while to study. The FAA says a minimum of 20 hours. That's what you should study for this exam. So you go through this and then you go in person to take a test. Yep. The company is called PSI and you go on their website, you can find a testing center. There's always one nearby. I think the worst I've heard is driving two hours to go to a testing center. For anyone that's gone through Pilot Institute, it's pretty rare for someone to not pass. Yeah, we've had about 20 failures total and you fail, we'll give you your money back and we'll pay for your retest. So you've had to do that 20 times so far? 20 times so far, yes. <laughs> Which is not bad for 80,000 people yeah. <laughs> and even drone business made easy yep. so we help people how to start a, a successful business by doing research and finding out how to price your product uh, what you should get into, what you should not get into. So we really helped you create a business plan actually. And if you go to the top right here, you'll see that uh, we have state drone laws. If you want to find specific rules for your specific state, so if you were in Arizona right now, you'll realize that like the Navajo Nation, for example, doesn't allow you to use drones without their approval. So everything is kind of centralized in one place. This is a six months project that we worked on gathering all the different uh, city rules that we could find and putting them in here. And it's a wiki, so people help us keep it up to date. And there are also suggestions on places to yep. fly. So if I plan on doing a trip up to Oregon and they'll give you some suggestions on spots to fly in Portland. Yeah, and the cool thing is you can check airspace. We actually work with a loft where you can see the location where you can fly and see the airspace around it at the same time. Look at this chair though. It's a real 747 chair. But yeah, it has a real tray. It has a real screen back here. And this is actually off of a real plane, right? Yep, 747 from Delta. So this has had plenty of crying babies on it and it's all genuine. Can bring 
bring this up and do oh, like this. Yeah. It can shake like you know, turbulence. Is, oh, turbulence. <laughs> the laws are constantly changing and remote ID is a great example because what is it, September, which is next month from yeah. filming now, rules are gonna be a little bit different. Starting September 16, if you wanna fly in the United States, you have to have remote ID. You'd have to have either a drone that has remote ID like the Mavic 3, or you have to put a module on top of your drone in order to comply with remote ID. So remote ID doesn't apply under sub 250, but only in recreation. Correct, unless you want to fly out of Freya or Freya, which are non-existent, unfortunately. Right, which is kind of just like little designated zones. But I think for most people buying drones now, most likely you're gonna buy a Mavic. It's probably gonna come with a remote ID installed. So you generally can just continue doing what you're doing. And then when we come to over here, like with the FPV drones. Yep, there's a lot of issues with the FPV and remote ID for several reasons. For the weight of the module that's gonna to have to be added on here, obviously for the privacy issue of people knowing the location of the drone because of remote ID. And the people that fly these use goggles, right? And they may not be able to see somebody coming behind them or whatever it is. So there's some privacy issues coming with that. But there are solutions that are fairly lightweight that can be soldered directly onto the drone to be compliant with remote ID. They're still not as cheap as I wish that they would be, but they are available at the moment. There's still a lot of unknown questions about remote ID and how it's going to be implemented. And we're only 30 days away from that happening. So right. it's pretty crazy. So this is our Mini 2 from DJI. This is the Japanese version of the Mini 2. It's called Ultralight. It's very difficult to find, but it's 199 grams. Once you put this on, it's still sub 250 grams. This is a category one drone that we can fly over people. And that's very rare. So you mentioned category one. So there's four categories of drone kind of based on their size and safety. And, and when you have a part 107, there's yep. certain exceptions to certain drones on flying over people. But category one is under 250 grams with prop guards. Yep. And that's incredibly hard to do. Right? Very difficult to do. Right, because the mini, it's 249 grams without yep. prop guards, but you need to have it under 250 with prop guards. With prop guards, yep. This is category one because I know it meets the requirement. Category two, three, and four need to be approved by the FAA. So some people may say, well, what about uh, Mavic 2 Pro? It looks like it might be a category two, but it's not because it hasn't been approved by the FAA as a category two. So we cannot fly this drone over people or people in moving vehicles. And to check the categories, you could go on the FAA's website to yep. see what drones are approved. And it's an empty list over there. There's only one category three and then a handful of category four. Category four are larger drones that require a type certificate, which is very complicated with the FAA, typically a drone delivery. So basically, if you ask, can I fly my drone over people? The short answer is most likely not. Most likely not. And I wanna add also on the website for the FAA, there's two different types of information on that website. One for remote ID approval and one for operations over people approval. So OOP stands for operating over people. Yep. And then the remote ID, is that a good way to check if your drone has remote ID? Yep. Flying over private property. You can actually fly over private property because the airspace is controlled by the FAA. Now, is it a good idea to fly over somebody's property when they're in their backyard? Probably not. But if you're doing like a, a, a video shoot for for real estate, for example, and you have to fly over somebody's property, it is legal to do that. Hmm. Don't film inside of somebody's house. That's a peeping Tom. The peeping Tom thing is like just a separate thing altogether, but it's a camera. that's what protects people against privacy. Yes. So visual line of sight, you're officially supposed to be able to see the drone wherever it is. But then in FPV, I put on my goggles and now I can't see. Under part 107, it says that you need to be able to be able to see the drone at all times and somebody has to look at the drone or see the drone at all times. So that's two part rule. If you're able to remove them and see the drone, then it fits one of the criteria, but it doesn't fit the other one because as soon as you put them on, you can't see the drone outside. So I would be standing here as your visual observer, then we good, we meet the, the 10731 requirements. So we would be right here, you'd be flying and I'll give you some tips and I'll say, oh, there's somebody on the kayak, be careful. Under part 107, we can be in a different location. Recreationally, we have to be next to each other. That's just the differences in regulation right there. Now I'm going into my FPV goggles right here so I could see the feed, but as long as I can pull off my goggles, and see the drone, Yep, I'm good here. And then we're gonna use Ethan is gonna be our visual observer. So that way you have somebody, cause I'm flying. So technically I cannot be your visual observer. So with splotches of clouds around here, what is it? 500 feet underneath the cloud and 2000 feet horizontally, horizontally right? Yes. Yep. And then a visibility of three statute miles, which we have plenty of visibility here. So there is a hundred mile per hour speed limit, yes. right? That's correct. Now there's a rule for only one drone per person, but there's those drone shows where we're sending up 
hundreds in the air at once to do a uniform dance and right. put on a light show. Yep. How's that work? It's a waiver from the FAA. They have software that they use, so I think that's what makes the FAA feel very comfortable. We got some questions here. Do FPV drones under 160 grams still have to follow flight restrictions? Oh yes, that's yes. a good question. So any drone of any size need to follow all the rules except the registration one that we talked about. Oh, can you fly while being drunk? No, you cannot. Oh. So neither, neither under 107 nor the other one. The so. government doesn't want us to have any fun. <laughs> what was it, eight hours bottle of the throttle? Eight hours bottle to Unless throttle. Unless you're still hungover. Until then you hang maybe over. a little bit longer than eight hours. Yes. Where do you recommend getting part 107 certified? Hmm. Link down there in the description. Have you started using remote ID? If you fly a DJI drone, yeah, you have because it's turned on already. But in FPV, that's still something that I still need to figure out. How many remote ID modules do you have? Ooh, so oh. how many do you have? <laughs> uh, zero as of now, but I still have a whole month to do it. That's so. right. Yeah, we have about seven or eight in the office right now that we're testing. So yeah. we will be putting out a video with our favorite one. It's going to be depending on what you do, like FPV versus, you know, uh, just putting on an old drone or whatever it is. Right, because yeah. for FPV, we probably want something super lightweight and something we solder on. Exactly. Otherwise, you might something that you could just stick on that maybe has its own the power source. Course. Yep, exactly. Yeah. What's the one law you don't want to break? You fly in commercial airplanes all the time. You don't want that to hit a drone. So stay below 400 feet, watch for the airspace, and don't fly in busy airspace. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it seems yep. like the last things you want to do is hit an aircraft yep. or hit a person. That's so exactly right. It's not legal to take drones through airports in Pakistan. Some countries definitely have issues with drones. They will confiscate them when you arrive in the country if you have them and then you can sometimes take them back when you leave but not always. And then a good example of that is cruise ships. So if you go on a cruise ship make sure you ask them beforehand if you can even take it because if they see it in your luggage they might actually confiscate it. So just make sure you check with the cruise line before you go. Traveling with drones is definitely something that you want to brush up on and yep. there's been cases of people flying drones in other countries and then getting thrown in jail. Getting arrested. How do you guys wrap up your videos usually? Do you have like a good like, outro? Yeah, just like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video. That's yeah. what he said. What he said. Cool. <laughs>